please. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Before the Lord decides to move in a territory, to move in a space, to move in a place, there are certain preconditions that must be met. And if we study revivals, we will be able to itemize these conditions that must be on ground before the Spirit of God finds free course. One of the atmosphere God must achieve before the day of revival breaks out is brokenness. Brokenness is a state where a man owns up. A man acknowledges that he has no legal ground to bring strong reasons before God as touching his justification. That it is only by the mercies of God that he can stand before God. Brokenness is a place where the sense of righteousness, the sense of entitlement has been withdrawn from a man. It is the day of revival that was the point that the, the prodigal son got to where he says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. That was what he, he rehearsed. He would tell his father that make me as one of your servants. So he has lost that sense of entitlement. Mind you, the beginning of the journey started from give me my own share of the inheritance. He laid claim to something. There was something he feels he deserved. But when God is done dealing with a man, the state that the heart of the man is brought to is, I am no longer worthy. It is from that place that the father bestows honor. Honor to an extent that the elder brother of the prodigal son will need to be offended by the level of honor bestowed on the person that don't deserve it. Please tell yourself, I will never deserve anything God does for me. Come on, go ahead and say it. I will never deserve anything God does for me. One of the things God is doing in this season, he is bringing many of us to the end of ourselves. He allows you to explore your strength, allow you to go on the strength of your arm. Then he allows your strength to reveal to you all of your incapacitation. So in the midst of that place, only then can you arrive at brokenness. Brokenness is a, is a place you arrive at where you no longer have confidence in yourself. Ah, there are many things that give you power. You can start the journey of life and one of your greatest strength to be your beauty. I have met many a lady like that. They stand in front of the mirror for more than 30 minutes. Looking, just looking. Look small and smile. You know what Instagram has become? Huh? And Snapchat and TikTok. You need to see vanity on display. Somebody will just hold their phone like this do their eye like this, you know, do their like all kinds of corners. It's, it's, you are just appreciating yourself. 
having a nice time. I have seen, I have seen. I have also read in the account of those who are older than me. It is that place where you have your strongest strength. That is where your biggest weakness will come from. And because you feel you are beautiful, chances are that you, you, will, you will enter a sense of entitlement. Somebody texts me this afternoon and say, you have not sent me my birthday gift. I am thinking, who, who is this? And then when I use true color, because you know, uh, there's one app called true color. <laughs> In the day where it is necessary to know the identity of men without actually asking them, I, I just put that number on true color. And I found out it's one girl in my primary school. She's now a slave queen. I, we have not talked for how many years now, since primary school till now. Found my number, sent me a text message that I have not seen my birthday gift. So I say, okay. So this is how the operating system of a slave queen is. They think everybody owe them a gift. They think because it's their birthday, the world should be on pause. Eh? Then they'll say, today is world Chinaye day. Then, then they'll now see their pictures everywhere. You know, that thing that is telling you that people need to give you something just because it is an honor for them to know you. <laughs> it's a sense of entitlement. And the day God would like to use you, he will remove that entitlement. And the way he will do it, you will watch ladies that are not nearly as beautiful or pretty as you. Huh? You will see men will jump you and come to that one that you say, she doesn't know how to dress. She doesn't even have a good dress sense. Look at this local. The local ones will get married, all of them. They will have two kids, three kids. Then the, the person with entitlement feel like it will be a, any man that dates me is a privilege. I am communicating an ancient, an ancient trouble in different generations. It is that your strength that is the reason why God cannot move. Although you are pretty, your eye must look beyond beauty. Because in the day of God's visitation, he will not share his glory with any man. If, if you marry and then spirit say, Kai, it's because she's pretty. There's no glory for God in that thing. And so in the day where God wants to prove his might, he will, he will be made strong in your weakness. So it is that person that is saying, Lord, settle me. It's that person that God's visitation will come for first. I am advising a handful of people here. I only use marriage as a case study. We have jobs as case study. Very intelligent. Come out from campus boiling like, like a hundred degrees Celsius water. And then you, you stay in the labor market for two years, three years. Your third class friend has gotten a job. You say it's politics that they place him. You, why can't they place you? Four years, five years, six years. A time will come when you will lose that feeling like you are better. You see that thing that is telling you that with men you are better. That, that thing that says you are a guru, that you know yourself. The day God is able to break that thing, suddenly you can enjoy the help of God. There are many things Satan is bringing our attention to. Many people quietly where you are sitting down, there is something you have your confidence in. Today you will lay it down. You, the help of God, God does not help strong men. God helps the weak. The help of God follows weakness. He is made strong in our weakness. Where is your strength? I want to show you how Satan works now. There is an area, there is something Satan is telling you, you are better than other men at. There is something he's showing you that if it's this one, forget it, you are good. If you follow that feeling, follow that belief, and then you journey on that path, that strength will become the reason why God cannot move. Mind you, everybody wants to build their success around the area of their strength. And your strength is only supposed to be God. Then you will now find out that that thing you have your greatest confidence in can now become the stumbling block between you and the visitation of God. God is made strong in our weakness. Can we bow our head anywhere you are? This is just an intro. Maybe your own is connection. Ah, you say, you just watch. You just watch. I know, I know the people we know. Your own is a sense of security in your appearance. When you look at yourself, you smile. Today, 
you will need a spirit to add favor to your life. You will carry your face well painted, all the makeup, and people will walk past you. It will take a spirit to add favor to you. Can you cry tonight? Maybe your own is that strength, that strength in your academic performance. You will need more than all those things. Maybe a business partner has given you their word and you are so confident. That confidence can become the stumbling block. Why God cannot show up and visit you miraculously. You will ask the Lord, I give up on everything. You are my strength. You are my pillar. You are my confidence. You are my all. You are my hope. You are my hope for tomorrow. I trust in you and you alone. I trust in you and you alone. Jesus, Jesus, Holy Ghost, add to my weakness. Holy Ghost, help this weak boy. Help this weak girl. The resistance to God in your life is your strength. It's your strength. It's your strength. Before the prophetic utterance could rest upon Jacob, before they can change his name into Israel, they had to distort his strength. The angel had to scatter his balance. When they made him weak, then they added Adonai to him. That your strength is a disadvantage. That your strength is a disadvantage. He is made strong in our weakness. If you have never asked the Holy Ghost, help me, help me. Today, you will lend that prayer, help me. You are so full of yourself, so confident in your performance. And so you cannot ask for help. God does not help strong men. The help of God is for the weak. Tonight, I show you a mystery. I show you the only stumbling block between you and your visitation. You must become weak before God. Wise men make themselves weak. Wise men make themselves weak before God. Although I read, although I have crammed all the pages of the nectar notes, although I have it on my head, I come before him and kneel down. Help me or I will fail. And God says, what? What? How come you don't glory in yourself? Let he that glory, glory it. Let he that glory it, glory it, that he has the Lord. That the Lord is his rewarder. The Lord is his strength. Oh, yes. Yes, you are a graduate. Yes, you have a certificate, brother. You will have to remove that from your mind and ask the Lord, help this person, help. I have no confidence, I have nothing. If you don't help me, I am done. And then the Holy Ghost says, I have found the atmosphere. I have found a man I can help. Can you touch the help of God this night? There is a state of heart that I want to draw you into. That is how men can assess the help of God. You can be strong, you can be strong. And touch God's help. You can be strong and touch His help. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. This is lesson number one on assessing the help of God. The only people that will see Ebenezer in this life are the weak. The only people that will ever experience Ebenezer, the helper, is those who have showed him that they are not strong. You will have something the devil will want to use to build a sense of security around your life. Weakness is a conscious thing in the realm of the spirit. You consciously show your weakness. Men are known to cover all their faults, hide and veil anything that is not perfect about them. Men are known to, to be creatures of packaging. So with men, you present yourself like you are perfect. And it is almost, almost possible to carry that same mentality before God. And you will just be trying to veil. God wants that if there is a challenge, say there is a challenge. When you come before him, tell him what is happening. If you are not happy with him, say I'm not happy. But what can I do? Who can I run to? That is David's prayer. He comes before God and he expresses himself. Then all this pretense. The help of God is for the weak. Is for the weak. Is for the weak. The marriage is shaking. You can see it. Answers are leaving your hands. Yet, you know, you just, you just come and you are pretending. You are covering it up. You want it to look like everything is perfect. Because what men think is more important to you than even this, this struggle you are going through. And you can't come before God and say, heal this marriage. Somebody is going through a battle of lust. The spirit of lust is almost colonizing their soul. You can't even come before God and say, I'm in trouble. You just say, I know one day, one day I will just take a fast, a 21 day fast. And when I come out from there, I know that all these things will end one day. You are a strong man. You cannot be helped. Money cannot stay in your hand. You, you are seeing it like play like this. Even the, the 10,000, 100,000, you will look. You don't know what you did with it, yet it's not around. Go before God quickly now, before one million disappear. Go before God, before a billion is squandered. No, the man is still strong. He says, there is a business plan. There is a, a, a spending routine. You don't know that it's a spirit. It's called a devourer. Only God can help you resist it. What you actually are dealing with spiritually, the great teacher says there's, there's hole in your pocket. That, <laughs> that there's a hole. That is if you put anything. That there are things that will drop. You will not know where it entered. You are seeing small, small signatures. Small, small comma here and there. I need help. I was watching one of Benson Idahosa's clip. He says one of the most powerful prayer you can pray is God, help me. Help me. The people who we are, we are following, when they now show that, okay, this is our secret. He said, you, you think a, more, a powerful prayer according to the Pentecostal context should be, rend the heavens and the galaxies. Ben Sinida also said, God, help me. Help. Simple prayer. He's only, he's only an arrogant man that cannot say that. Mind you, there are people sitting down here you have never in your life asked anybody for help and it makes you feel proud. Not God, not man. You stay like this. People, people are accusing you, all kinds of things going wrong. You just stay by yourself. You are gathering the pressure. You are just feeling boiling on your inside and saying, well, no Allah, I'm a one man soldier. Have, have you heard somebody say one man army before? That he's alone. That he doesn't really keep friends. And, and everything he has in his life, God knows he worked for it. No help. No help. It's the weak, it's the weak that sees God's help. And the weakness we speak about is a weakness that you choose to come before God showing exactly the state of your life. There are people who don't have answers to tomorrow, yet pretending, making all kinds of heavy, heavy declaration. Just be watching my life and see and in the secret you are thinking what next 
it is that state of that's what you are supposed to go to God with Lord I don't know what I will do some of you are about to graduate some of you are in your final year some of you have a business plan you don't know what next how this thing will work but you know the Pentecostal cliches you just, you just go around saying man I have plans everything is, everything is well even when your helper comes because of the way you talk your helper, your helper will not be able to identify the version of you that they can relate with. So you will now come even before somebody that should help you. You will be talking as though you are the one to help the person. There are times the Holy Ghost will just put it on your inside. Share your problem with this person. It's the Holy Ghost that said it. You know what? Every solution, every blessing, every intervention God will bring for your life will be through a man. Is a man that will be the face of God every time you need God. Even when Satan too will want to attack you, he will find a man. Sometimes you are, you are one simplicity, one humility from your deliverance. Just humility. Somebody has package, package blessings for you and then comes to you and say, um, brother, I see that you've been wearing this shoe for some time. You just say, ah, no. Ah, no, it's just, it's, it's a wilderness. If you see my wardrobe, you, it's just, it's just the whole, it's an instruction. The Holy Ghost said I should be wearing it. You have missed, you have missed, you have missed arrogance. Where are you going to this morning? Be honest. Be honest. You knew you were going scouting for a job. Your job is in that human being that asked you now. Holy Ghost have taken time to manipulate these two people to cross their path. Where are you going to? Pride will never allow the man acknowledge that there is something he's looking for that he has not gotten yet. How many people will be in prayer houses? They say, if you need a husband, you are trusting God for a wife, for a life partner. Come forward or lift up your hands. You see people who are really desperate for that season, they stay like this. You are a strong man. God cannot help you. You know what they are thinking? They think that if they come out, people will think that they are desperate. And God only helps the desperate. You see this thing I'm sharing with you. When you are done praying, you are done fasting, Satan is still waiting at this junction. He knows that when God even tries to help you, he can make you, he can make you fight God. So you will become a strong man in your day of visitation. God will say, I don't, I don't help the, the, the strong. How many people are dying in silence? Quietly. You go in the night, you wake up, you cry. You don't know what is going on and you are one deliverance away. Just talk to somebody. No. There's this feeling of what, what will people say? You that have been a perfect... Let me tell you one truth. Especially those of us who have something to do around the pulpit who are ministers. There, there's nobody that dies in secret like a minister. Even when you are physically sick, for God's sake, you don't want to ever be sighted near a chemist because you have positioned yourself as a celestial creature. Immortals don't fall sick. Hey, there's one deliverance. There's one deliverance Jesus wants to do for some people. Please, tell the person by your side, don't ignore your humanity. If you see that there's a brother who has sweated so much out of the profuse engagement in the enterprise of prayer, please touch him quickly because he may need this thing more than anybody. Tell him, don't ignore your humanity. There are places God sends me to, regions where we go to, and the fire of God breaks out, comes heavily upon them. And I know I am persuaded. I am convinced. It's not, it's, not, it's not a person they are seeking. They are looking for a shade of encounter. There is something they have seen from afar. And they want that such a visitation can become a norm in their own space. However, ask anybody who stay around me when we go for meetings. My biggest preparation is weakness. Any day I become strong, 
any day I, I, I stay and I, I memorize scriptures, I write two pages of, of preparation, you, you will see a weak man that day. But if you see me gisting with them, 30 minutes to ministration, I'm gisting. <laughs> what do we do in the last few minutes? We start crying for help. <laughs> Holy Ghost, don't let us waste their time. In my years, in the little years I have actually experienced the way the anointing works. When you begin to systematize the anointing, you want, you want to find a way to make it work without the presence of the spirit that commands it. They will leave you to yourself. So once they see that you now went to find one message, you now brought out some scriptures from the message, right? Some of you, this is your predicament. Jesus wanted to give you small help. You were praying, you were praying. So some brethren said, Kai, this syllable we're hearing in this tongue is as though you are a creature of Zion. You know all this Pentecostal talk. Then you now laugh <laughs> and say, well, God told me that it's time to announce me. Then they invite you for a ministration. Your first meeting, you cannot sleep. You first arrange what you will wear. You know, that's the first thing, the, the average... Now, you now arrange it. Imagine how that garment will look on the pictures. And you talk to more than four people to make sure they capture all the supernatural things that will happen in that meeting. You also make sure that you give your phone to somebody that the video this don't don't play with this thing. You know, in the person's mind, what is about to happen there based on what I know I have prepared for. You will find out if you have not found out. You will find out that it's that meeting that you had so much preparation. You will plan the first song you will sing. That when I sing this one, the power of God will break out. Four people will break chairs by that role. And then I will now say, calm down, calm down. We have yet a journey ahead of us. You will start finding out from the beginning that none of your plan will work. The Holy Ghost will make sure as you raise that song, then people, somebody will now sit down. As he was standing before. He will now sit down and cross his leg. Then in your mind you say, what is happening here? You will switch it into prayer because you think you want to add power to the atmosphere. So as you are shouting, you will now see two people carry their bag and, and leave. Mind you, you have not even, you have not even read your first scripture. <laughs> Another man, he, he prepared. Don't, don't misunderstand what I want to teach. He prepared. Then after he prepared, there is one last minute doubt that comes to every minister. The moment you want to ascend the place to become a blessing, something will start trying to remove that confidence and say, how, how would they? There is a feeling you would, is that feeling you will carry to Jesus and say, don't let me waste their time. Help me. That feeling is the only thing that can help you get the help of God. Mind you, the canal man will climb there with, with a limp and say, by the time ushers just get set, by the time this meeting enter another pedestal, you will see power. Then you will teach for 40 minutes. People will be sleeping. The help of God. Another person will come. When he's done teaching, he will say, give me the tape. You know why? The things he said, even him does not know it. So he has to go and listen to himself again. Because he was weak, so God became his strength. When God became his strength, he too became a student of the thing he taught about. You will find him listening to himself. I've walked into God's servant of Joshua Selman, listening to his message before. Listening to his own teaching. That was where I now say, hey, yeah. <laughs> was listening to it, his own teaching. That's, that's one of the ways to know that that thing that happened that day is not you. You too, you are a student of this whole process. The help of God. I'm begging somebody here. I'm begging somebody here tonight in the few minutes we have to tarry. 
One of the things you are praying for this night is, Lord, the prayer of Bensini Dahosa, help me. And when you start praying that prayer, the Holy Ghost will be showing you all your, your confidence. You, if, you, if you see one, help me. Help me. Help me. Woe. Woe to him that put his trust in the arm of the flesh. The arm of the flesh is anything in your vessel that you are good at. That's, that's the arm of the flesh. Some of you, because you can talk, you have the gift of oratory. You can put words together in slippery ways. So you think you are called. You will find out that it takes more than oratory to be an, an oracle for God. You will talk heavy things. You will speak from your head. It will only go to people's head. No transformation, no transition. No Sinners will be hearing your message and they will be saying, wow, wow. This man's a be preaching. You will call out that call, nobody will come out. They will say, boy, keep it up, keep it up. This message, is a, it, it touched me. <laughs> Allow God complete that thing you feel you are good at and watch the excellency upon it. Think you are good outside God. You don't even need to, you know, alienate God before God withdraws himself. You just need to be pushing yourself without God and watch how you will not have the help of the Holy Ghost. I read a scripture for us quickly before we go. If I read this scripture now, we'll probably enter a teaching. What do we do? What do we do? Okay. When it's about to rain, or after a heavy downpour, I need everybody's attention. Look at me. Have you witnessed thunder before? I don't think there's anybody here that have not witnessed thunder. If you have not, can I see your hand above your head? Amen. Now, before that thunder sounded, did you see lightning? Let's talk. Amen. It will interest you to know that the lightning and the thunder came from the same place. They happened at the same time. But it's just that the speed of light and the speed of sound is not the same. And so since one travels faster than the other, one will arrive and finish communicating, making an amiable. So anybody that actually understands how it works, if you see lightning, you are safe to cover your ear quickly because you know there is a sound that follows it. If you can follow me, say amen. amen. This is for the physical world. For the physical world, you will see the light before you hear the sound. Amen. amen. I, feel I've, 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 I feel like I've lost some people. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So in the physical world, you will first see the light. You will see before you hear. So you will see the bright lightning. And then a thunder will follow. So you first interacted with light before sound. In the spiritual world, you will hear the sound before you see the light. And so the procedure in the spiritual world is that God will say before you will see what he has said. So sound will go ahead of light. And light, there is only one organ designed in your body to relate with light, and it's your eye. What you call blindness is the inability of a man to relate with light. A blind man only sees everything dark. He cannot relate with light. However, no matter how sharp your eye is, if you step into a very dark room where there's no light, although you have eyes, you still not have the ability to see. He's telling you one thing. The reason why you can see is because there is light. If you can hear me say amen. amen. Number two, the reason why you can see is because there's consciousness. And so a pin can be by your shoe since you did not see it. 
until I start talking about pin. And I start saying how a pin can be on the ground and nobody will see it. Suddenly your eye will begin to investigate small, small details. Then you will see what was on ground all along. It takes consciousness to see what was around all along. Amen. And so you will find that in the progression of creation, you will hear God saying, let there be light. Then after God has said, a sound has gone ahead. Then you will now see the physical manifestation of what, what God declared through sound. But physically, light travels faster than sound. Chances are that with the human heart, the things that make for belief and faith, because light travels faster than sound, the average carnal heart will only be persuaded about the things he has seen first. He will not believe until he see. And that is what Thomas represented for all of us. Until I see, so I will not believe. But he has heard. He didn't believe it. Till I see. There is a dimension of God that you must first believe before you see it. God is not obligated to prove it to you just so that you will believe. He says, now faith is the substance of the things you are hoping for. It is the evidence of the things you have not seen. You will not see it before you. If it's faith, you cannot see it before you believe. The Bible says, blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. In the light of what we are sharing, there will be things about God's visitation for your life, about your deliverance, your change of season. It will happen, but it will not come as light yet because light is what men can see. Sometimes, wealth has entered your life as a sound, but nothing in your physical visage has changed into a wealthy person yet. Physically, men can still be seeing that chop chop palm sanders and that you know that 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 life you are living that does not you know position or describe or give anything to suggest that you have handled wealth the sound of wealth can enter your life in first kings chapter 18 from verse 40 you will hear elijah telling elisha to tell ahab that he hear the sound of abundance of rain. This man said, I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. He said, my ear, I have heard rain pouring. I have heard the showers pouring. When he told Ahab, Ahab was going to walk on the strength of that information. You know what Elijah did? He climbed the mountain. The Bible says he put his head between his two ties. Because he knows that that thing that he heard, that sound that he heard, there are spirits that are responsible to make sure that that crypto will not perform. He says, forever, O God, thy word is settled. But it's only settled where? In heaven. So when heaven wants to show you that we have answered this, your prayer, they will give you a sound. That sound is to give you a current-based knowledge as regarding what God has decided on that your situation. The only thing that is, you are waiting for now is for that thing to enter into the earth through light. But through sound, it has entered your ear. You have captured it. But there are three different channels you can receive information from spirits. You can receive through your ears. You can receive through your eyes and you can receive through your heart. There are things that cannot be communicated through sound, neither through light. It will only take an inspiration that will quicken in your heart. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered. So, it can enter through your eye, it can enter through your ear, it can enter through your heart. It has not entered into the heart of men. Men are waiting for the channel of light. And light is what you can see. Sound is what you have heard. 
you know what the word of God is? Is sound, sound life for you. There is light life and there is sound life. Sound life is what the Bible is telling you. You can take it, but your body is not showing it yet. It will take time for men to see that thing that has entered you. But I told you physically, light will appear before sound. And it is the way of the fallen world that light will first manifest, then sound will follow suit. In the spiritual world, sound will move ahead before you can see the light of what sound have declared. So God will collect those things which are not as though they were. He says he upholds all things by the power of his word. Through faith, we understand that the words were made by the word of God. The Bible says through faith we know that everything you are seeing was formed through words. So sound went before anything physical appeared. Let there be light and there was light. Sound will go ahead. I'm trying to share something with somebody. In case you don't know the power and the force of prayer, why you should be declaring things over your life. Sound must go ahead before light will manifest. Sound must go and do something. Light is a confirmation of what sound has designed. For those of you who are closing your mouth over your destiny and you are busy texting people and say pray for me, you are wasting resources. Sound must go ahead. However, there are things God wants to do. It's too hollow, too sensitive. It will just drop it in your heart. Nothing physical. You have not heard anything. You have not seen anything. You just have a knowing that in the next one month, my life will change. Something just... Have you woke, woken up before and something is telling you, be checking your email. Just be checking your email. Amen. A knowing. It has dropped in your heart. Your ear have not heard it. Your eye have not seen it. But it is in your heart. We don't know the different places where we can pick the feedback of God from. Most of the times, God drops thoughts in our hearts. As it enters your heart. The only time men will believe is when they see. And they only see when light has brought that in. But it will come as sound. It will come as light. It can also enter your heart as inspiration. Of all these ones, the only place men believe you have received it is when they see it. But why would you wait and do things like men? You too. The only place you believe is when you see it. No. You know when it enters your heart. Mind you, the deepest place of koinonia is the heart. This is level. Level of deepness. Eye. The eye is, is, the, is the most shallow. Eh? Amen. The eye eh, is the most shallow level of depth. If you are a person that God must show you everything before you believe it, you are the most shallow Christian. If God is obligated to prove to you, to show you first before you believe, you are the most shallow. There are people that will not need to be shown, but they need God to tell them. The next level of depth is the ears. Those who can hear and believe. Oh, but there are those that a blessing is left for. It's those ones that God can just drop something on their hearts. Their eye did not see it. Their ears did not hear it. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty on that spirit gave them understanding. You can pick the movement of God from your heart. It must not be what you heard. It must not be what you saw. You can receive an inspiration and know that this is God. You can want to enter a car and nobody will advise you. Nobody will say don't enter. You will not see any sign in the car as though the car is faulty. Something in your heart. How you shook hands with somebody. No human being came and warned you and said, be careful with this brother. No signal. Physically he's wearing a tie. The brother came and said, I've been watching you. I've been praying. And the Holy Ghost has given me the permission to come and tell you how I feel. Now, even though you, if, even, if, even if you are a devil, if a person come as gentle as this and said that he waited on the Holy Ghost before he came to you and he came with a tie, his belt is on his navel. 
What? How would you know that? How would you know that this is not of God? In that moment, where eye didn't see, ear didn't hear, your last line of defense is your heart. As you are shaking his hand, go and check the level of peace inside you. You will use that, that beast there. You will know whether the Holy Ghost knows this one or not. We don't use these powerful tools. Mind you, if you don't know what I'm trying to describe by talking about the heart, it's called discernment. That is what you fetch from the knowing in your heart. The gift of discernment. You say yes to Philistines, to Gentiles. Mind you, the devil will never come wearing a jean you know, and a pickup facing it backward and, you know, a ragged jeans. It will come with a suit. How many people have dated church brothers and found out that it is even better, my relationship with an ungodly guy was better than this church brother? Amen. Amen. You're not the one. Huh? How many aliens as the devil kept in the church just to make sure anybody who think they can encounter God though he will show them something your heart in the moment where no time no time to look, no time to hear run to your heart there, will, there is something sounding there you can use that many of us who have never explored that powerful tool your heart is like a lab where they, they do tests results are coming out every second Holy Ghost, is this one from you? Something in your heart, you will know. How would you know when, when you don't even know of the peace in your heart? How would you know if the peace, if the peace is shaking? You don't even know that there, there is a peace. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Huh? Such is the kingdom of God. Time is not on our side. Just to buttress my points. The reason why I devote these Tuesdays, you know, to teach these things now. Let's take two scriptures. Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 4, quickly. Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 4. I want everybody to read together. One, two, three, go. Go. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thy eyes, hear with thy ears, and set thy heart upon all that I showed thee. Listen. He says, look with your eyes. Hear with your ear. Then carry everything I've showed you. Use your heart to discern it. There are three places you can find the counsel of God. Information can penetrate either your eyes, your ears, most of the times, you will not see your intervention. You will not hear it. You will discern it. Go there and fetch it. A business plan. They come out. How many of you have your money been swallowed up in all those quick money schemes? Many of you are victims of MMM. What was the last one that made many brothers sorrowful? Remind me. Eh? No, it's not that one. No, there's one popular name. My God. See the different things people have suffered. <laughs> All kinds of names. Crowd one. Right? My God. I heard of a man who took his wedding. The money he saved for his wedding. He just said, well, if I just put it, I will now have a more colorful wedding. So as he just threw it inside like this. He now started seeing some news that some people are complaining. He now started calling the person he sent it to quickly. The person said, look, just, just, let's just wait and see. <laughs> the, only, the only help, the Holy Ghost can help you from an, from, from, from an MMM arrangement eh? is inside your heart. Because your eye will not see it. Your ear will not hear it. It will only enter the heart of man. You want to put your money, something will say, And then, once upon a time, it came to pass that I fell. I fell for Yahoo boys. That was when I now learned firsthand why people fall. It's because of greed. 
I was, I was in the room praying that day. Just praying, enjoying the fellowship of God. And I saw myself as part of a telegram group. I started seeing testimonies of people who are writing that they just put 10,000 and before you know it that they got 50,000. And thank you admin. We, I, me too, I didn't believe this thing from the beginning. But thank you. I saw another testimony. I saw another testimony. Something say, don't tell anybody this thing. Why don't you just carry that your money that you have saved up? You just put it quickly, remove it. Then with time, when you have gained much from it, you can now divert the information so that others can be blessed. Wicked, selfish heart. Mind you, my deliverance would have been if I discussed with somebody. They would have said, ah, don't, ah, don't, I know that thing. But the greedy man want to benefit alone. You know how much I put there? Guess, just guess where you are. Guess now. No. No. Celebrate you so much. You know, when the gift of the Holy Ghost is working. <laughs> that was two years ago. From up to down, my worth was 200k. I carried that thing. I, I, I had my confidence in. And as if I put it, the person who put 10,000 got 50,000. If I put 200,000. My God, I started planning what to buy. I, I have I've calculated the way I will enter the shop. I'll give me two of these, quick. As I just sent the 200, as he left my body, a knowing just entered me. You know what the Holy Ghost taught me that day? There is greed inside you. So instead of me to weep, I began to cry for mercy. And I preached that week with a sorrowful face. Many people, it's only today that you will now know what happened. People said, what is happening? What was wrong? I said, nothing, nothing. I knew how long it took me that year to gather 200,000. It just vanished like that because greed. Something told me that. Now, let me ask you a question. Why would you put 200,000 into something and after 24 hours, eh? You will now get 1 million. Wh which, which investment is that? But a greedy man can never be logical. He only goes on to show me the state of my heart. For those of you who are smiling and laughing at me, may your day... <laughs> May the Lord, may the Lord expose your greed early in life. Because now I'm thanking God that it's, it's that time that they, they, they help me. Imagine if it's now. That day I, I, I called the person's number. They didn't pick it. I called again, they didn't pick it. And I sent a text message that I use God. Please. The guy now replied me, and it was that reply that became my greatest message. See, even if I see money on the ground now, eh, I will just jump and pass it. There is no, there is no free thing. There must be a price paid. He said, "Oh God, I don't scam you." That, that is the, the message he sent back to me. So stop calling. Just move on. Move on. Ah. <laughs> oh God, I don't scam you. I read it. Oh. I left that message in my in my phone. I didn't delete it. Oh God, don't scam you. That, that is, if, if I understand what it meant, stop calling. Just just move. Just trust God for something else. <laughs> Greed. My deliverance was in my heart. In that moment, your eye will not see, your ear will not hear. There will be a feeling you are supposed to have had koinonia with God to know. 
wherever you are, at your seated position, so that you will not also be a victim. Your first prayer point is, Lord, help me. Help. That's the only thing we cry for this night. Help me. Help me. Help me. Just in case you are a strong man, look for the help of God this night, quickly, wherever you are. Give me help, Jesus. Yesu karikeni ka hanuna karikeni ka hanuna karikeni ka hanuna karikeni ka hanuna karikeni Hanuna Karikeni Oh ya Yesu Karikeni Hanuna Karikeni Oh ya Yesu Karikeni Hanuna Karikeni Lord help me Help me. Help me. I'm not strong. Help me. I'm not wise. Help me. I don't have the answers. Help me. I don't know where to choose. Help me. I'm confused. Help me. I have fear in my heart. Help me. Holy Ghost. I'm not as confident as I appear. Help me. Ben Zinidahosa says, God, help me. I hope today you will not be too proud to ask for help. Help me. Help me. You are my hope. You are my hope. The only reason why I think I will see tomorrow is you. The only reason why I, I think I will be successful is you. The only reason why I think my marriage will work is you. Help me. Help. God, help me. The only reason why I think my children will not be wayward is you help me help me i'm begging somebody today to make god their strength i'm begging somebody today to make god their strength the only reason i believe my ministry will prosper is you help me help me help me my bible school notwithstanding my school of ministry training notwithstanding lord help me holy ghost help this boy help me help me don't let me waste don't let me waste Yes. Go ahead and ask for his help. Tonight you leave this place touching the help of God. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. You saw Ebenezer this night. You and Ebenezer came face to face. I have found the help of God. I have found the help of God. Spirit leads me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters.
Go ahead and ask for his help. Spirit, lead me. Spirit, lead me. Holy Ghost, help me. Yes, I have a voice. I don't trust my voice. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Except the Lord watcheth over his city. The watchman stayeth awake in vain. Except the Lord builds a house, the laborers labor in vain. rise and thunders rise I will saw in you I broke the storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still and know you I will be seen and know you what I would you be still and know he is God would you be still Can you submit your strength to God now? I will soar in you. Father be my strength be my victory complete me complete me complete my weaknesses there's nothing I can do without you only you only you only you only you Holy Ghost only you We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We 
you father because you complete us we thank you father because you perfect us we are not sufficient in ourselves and we acknowledge our deficiencies tonight I pray that it pleases you to be made strong in our weaknesses as many of the people who have asked for your help everyone who have asked to be strengthened everybody who have acknowledged weaknesses before you, make them strong, I pray. Make them strong. Make them strong. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We've come to the end of our meeting. Please love one another. And God bless you. Yeah, yeah.